This is Xiong Xianghui, and this is his last photograph. Xiong played a vital undercover role during the final phase of the Communist Revolution, and he was a key figure in China's reemergence onto the international scene. His life story, like all good biographies, is full of twists and turns. Some say he was a freedom fighter. Many describe him as a hero. None deny that he is a legend. After the formal establishment in 1949 of the People's Republic of China, Xiong Xianghui served as Vice Director General of the Information Department of China's Ministry of Foreign Affairs. In 1961, Xiong accompanied Vice Premier Chen Yi to attend the Geneva Conference in Laos, where his diplomatic skills were again found invaluable. 1961 was also the year that a number of famous people visited China. 六一年的时候，蒙哥马利元帅第二次访问中国，当时候受呃周总理的委托呢，呃熊老以外交部办公厅副主任的名义呃全程陪同。On September fifth, nineteen sixty-one, then seventy-four years old, Montgomery paid his second visit to China. Montgomery not only met with Mao Zedong and Zhou Enlai. He also visited a number of cities, including Baotou, Taiyuan, Yan'an, Xi'an, and Luoyang. Xiong Xianghui served as his guide. Xiong's next meeting with Montgomery followed soon thereafter in the United Kingdom. The 就是考虑到了熊老，然后熊老就出任了中央，就任命熊老那个出任当时候的驻英代办，这是他第二任。In 1962，Xiong took up the post in London, and soon after arriving, visited Montgomery. Except in the area of trade, this period of Sino-British relations languished in the shadow of Washington's hostility to Communist China. In London, Xiong labored to establish friendly relations with people both within and out with diplomatic circles. China's Cultural Revolution broke out in 1966, and in July of 1967, Xiong Xianghui returned to China. He was transferred to work in a village, and heavy work is exactly what Xiong did. Xiong at that time stayed with his family. He did not know that his life was changing in lockstep with China's international relations. January of 1969, Richard Nixon was elected U.S. President. A strident anti-communism advocate, Nixon's hardening attitude towards China and the Soviet Union were reflected in his administration's policies. At the same time, the relationship between China and the Soviet Union began to worsen, and on March 2, 1969, Soviet troops invaded China's Treasure Island. Hostilities between the two nations now expressed themselves as armed conflict. With troubles on both the eastern and western front, Mao Zedong gave four marshals, Chen Yi, Ye Jianying, Xu Xiangqian, and Nie Rongzhen, the task of investigating the contemporary international situation. The 呃，四位四位老帅又跟总理说，因为我们年纪大了啊，看材料呢，有时候不方便啊，能不能给我们找一位助手？然后呢，总理就亲自点将，找到了那个熊老。This was a secret task, and Xiong was among the few people involved with its discharge. His main job was to reorganize the discussion records of the four marshals. Meanwhile, America gradually changed its attitude towards China. 
and President Nixon at last indicated his willingness to have high-level talks with China. Xiong Xianghui once again became very busy, and again his works and days were shrouded in mystery. 正好在家，天天看他忙，不知道忙什么。然后我和我表姐就猜，然后说那个他他不说，我说你忙什么呢？他不说。In fact, Xiong Xianghui was busy arranging a reception for Henry Kissinger, and on July 9, 1979, United States Secretary of State Henry Kissinger secretly visited China. Nixon referred to the visit as "polo activity" in reference to Marco Polo. Xiong Xianghui was appointed as head of the Records and Data Branch. His job to collect Sino-American historical data. Summarize it, and then report it both to Chairman Mao and Premier Zhou. 当着熊老作为总理的助理嘛，全程参加了总理和基辛格的所有的秘密谈判，同时还还是呃基辛格访华公告的起草人。这个公告后来发表了，震惊了世界。他就说，宣布了尼克松总统将在七二年五月以前的适当时间访问中国。On April 15, 1971, Nixon announced that he too would visit China before May of next year. On February 21, 1972, the temperature in Beijing may have been cool, but U.S.-Sino relations had warmed a little with the commencement of Richard Nixon's eight-day visit to China. Contact, if not actually connection, was made at last. Nixon's visit to China played an important role in the development of Sino-U.S. relations. First generation of leaders and diplomats, like Xiong Xianghui, made great contributions to China's strengthening its external links and establishing its image in the modern world. Before Nixon visited China, the United Nations passed a resolution to restore China's UN membership. Upon getting the news, the central government immediately organized a Chinese delegation to attend the last half of the 26th session of the UN General Assembly. On November 9, 1971, Zhou Enlai saw the delegation off at the airport. This part of the delegation is Chairman Mao. This is the 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 其中有就是熊强辉同志，都是一些啊，这个这个有名的外交官，在外交方面有出色表现的人来去。In April of 1972, Xiong Xianghui was assigned to a mission in Mexico. He had never expected that someday he would engage in diplomatic affairs with an ancient country on a high plateau. 他当时被任命为中华人民共和国驻墨西哥大使馆的大使，首任大使。然后那个四月份宣布这个互派大使，然后他八月份去。Xiong Xianghui discerned that friendship with Mexico had to be developed step by step, and that the relationship with leading figures in Mexico needed to be built firm. 他和总统、和外交部长，他
他都抓住一切机会和可能性，所以说来加强跟他们的联系，加强跟他们接触，建立起他们我们大使和他们之间的友谊。这个工作做到了他们的夫人、他们的家属身上。In Mexico, Xiong Xianghui once said, "I am and will always be a student of Mexico." I will learn from Mexico's revolutionary tradition, from its culture and history, from its international position in defense of justice, and from its people. That is, their glorious history and spirit of defending themselves against colonialism and struggling for national independence. Soon after this, another activity further deepened the Mexican people's favorable impression of China. In 1973, China's Shenyang acrobatics troupe visited Mexico. The first show was staged in the Palace of Fine Arts, which, in its day, was one of Mexico's most prestigious venues. When they were filming, the Mexican diplomatic service told them, "We will show some tickets. Who will come? You don't need to." 啊，你也不用送，就墨西哥方面谁来，你不用送。所以等到那天一去，先是这个什么一大堆的部长来了，就已经很很不得了了。最后总统夫妇也来了，而且总统是当天上午是到哪个州去视察，然后临时赶回来的，啊，让所有的人都都都惊讶坏了。The arrival of the president's family and political VIPs caused a great sensation. Applause burst from the crowd and echoed in the theater like thunder. The performance was a great success. At the banquet after the show, President and Mrs. Echeverria shook hands with each of the performers who hadn't even time to remove their costumes or makeup. The Mexican president then presented gifts to each of them. The success enhanced the affinity between China and Mexico. In April of 1973, the Mexican president visited China in the spring, touring Beijing, Dajai, and Shanghai. Mao Zedong conversed with him in discussions said to have exceeded the length of the chairman's chat with U.S. President Richard Nixon. China had made a positive impression upon Echeverria, who spoke especially highly of the Chinese ambassador. As time passed by, Xiong Xianghui was committed to several positions. In every one, he devoted himself to his country. As time marched ahead, the elegant young man grew into a wise elder. On September 9, 2005, Xiong Xianghui passed away in Beijing at the age of 86. Media at home and abroad reported his death, and Xiong was mourned as an extraordinary champion of the people, equally adept in many arenas and theaters. Xiong Xianghui's whole life was as complicated as any book could be, and as sublime as any patriotic pian. But if his career must be summed up in words, it could be told gracefully in one line: With all his life, did he to his faith cleave.